Hi, I'm Ben. I'm a dive instructor. Hi, I'm Mickey. I'm a dive instructor. We both live in the Philippines. Welcome to the Life Aquatic. In each one of our episodes, we will talk about one of our favorite aquatic animals. Hope, Hope you, you enjoy. enjoy. The Life Aquatic. Welcome back to our channel. Thanks for tuning in again. This episode, we're going to focus on the green turtle, the most predominant sea turtle species here in the Visayas region in the Philippines. We're going to look at its behavior and life cycle, habitat, taxonomy, anatomy, and special physiological features, whilst also looking at the major threats of this endangered species. Last but not least, we're going to give you divers some tips on how to spot them. We are still in the hole thanks to the longest ongoing lockdown in the world here in the Philippines. More specifically, Dolpho Beach, Panglao. This is one of the departure points to the hottest tourist attraction in the area, Palikasak Island. Every day, dozens of people leave here by traditional pumboat or panka to go and experience the fantastic diving it has to offer and witness the huge sea turtle population that's swimming around the island. So guys, let's have a closer look at the taxonomy of our beloved green sea turtle, who is part of the animal kingdom. Its film is the core data because it is a vertebrate. As a cold-blooded herbivore, he is classified as a reptilian. And he belongs to the order of the Testudines. He shares that with other turtles, tortoises, and terrapins. And is in the suborder of the Cryptodira, characterized by a non-retractable hidden neck. He belongs to the superfamily of the Chiloneoidea, or sea turtles, which he shares with loggerheads, hogsbills, leatherbacks, and olive ridleys. And its Latin name or scientific name is the Chilonia Midas. There are many species of sea turtles. The green turtle is one of the largest among them and also the only herbivore. Right after they are born they are mainly carnivorous, then switch to a more omnivorous diet as juveniles and spend their mature lives being vegetarians. Green turtles aren't named after their shell, which is brown, but after the greeny color of their cartilage and fat. Back in the 19th century, they were hunted and killed for their meat, which was used in a popular American dish called turtle soup. Even in Dutch language, they still call them soup pot, which literally translates as soup turtles. Their carpus is teardrop shaped and very smooth thanks to the help of the remoras that cling onto it and eat the algae. Acting as natural polishers. In Native American mythology, turtles symbolize longevity and good health. Their hard shell represents perseverance and protection. In Japan, turtles symbolize long lives as well as good luck and support. It's also the symbol of Kompira, or the god of seafaring people. It's not a surprise, turtles can live up to 80 years, even longer, who knows? One of the most interesting facts about the green turtle is its absolutely mind-bending migratory behavior. Because mature turtles have to return to their home beach to lay eggs, they have to cover enormous distances between their feeding and spawning grounds. They have been tagged and tracked, swimming over 2,600 kilometers. Mickey, where are you going? We're in the middle of a shot here. I'm going for a swim. You swim where? Indonesia. Isn't that far? Well, it's 3,000 kilometers, but if green turtles can do it, so can I. See ya.
This phenomenon is called natal homing because the beach they've been visiting for generations to hatch has proven to be successful. It is the main reason behind their reproductive success. Males as well as females have to go home just to mate and breed. After mating, the females deposit their eggs in a ditch they dig with their paddle-like fins and cover them up with sand. Fifty to seventy days later, when the eggs finally hatch during the night, the baby turtles crawl out of their little egg shells and make their way out to the water instinctively, using the moon as their guiding light. Sadly enough, only 1% of them makes it alive, because once in the water there is a myriad of predators lying in the wait for them, among which sharks, groupers, turf valley and barracudas that consider them a delicious little meal. Unfortunately, some don't even make it to the sea because they get tackled or eaten by stray dogs, seagulls, crabs or even monitor lizards. Green turtles are found mainly in tropical and subtropical waters. There is an Atlantic and in the Pacific subpopulation. They basically inhabit different habitats depending on their life stage. Younger turtles prefer to venture and head out to deeper waters, where it's rare to see them. Once they get older, they live near continental or island coastlines. They swim around, but they love to spend most of their time in shallow seagrass beds, coral reefs and salt marshes. When they get really mature, they prefer not to swim around too much and stay in the same spot. One of our oldest residents here is a male turtle, about 1.6 meters high. He has a tail the size of a carrot and according to locals is over 100 years old. You can find him at the same spot in the seagrass beds at around 6 meters every day. Chelonians have four legs and a hard shell made of two parts lying on top of each other joined at the sides. The smooth top part is the carapace, the softer bottom the plastron. Their heads are lizard-like with a toothless mouth that looks like a beak. The legs are paddle-like flippers. They have two fore flippers and two hind flippers. Adult green turtles can weigh up to nearly 200 kilograms and measure up to half a meter. Males have a larger tail than females. On the fore flippers, they have curved claws that are used for gripping the females when mating. Green turtles cannot withdraw their heads into their shells, but are protected by their shell and thick scaly skin on their heads and necks. The tile-like pieces that make up the carapace are called scoots and are named according to their position. It's slippery there. I didn't know you wear glasses. Oh yeah, I'm really nearsighted. But I only wear them for reading and driving. Just like turtles, they're really nearsighted on land. But thanks to their lenses being adjusted for refraction underwater, they can see perfectly clearly while diving. They don't have external ears like we do, 
but thanks to their hair bone or color mella, they can hear low frequency sounds in combination with their skull, backbone and shell that function as an amplifier. They have two holes that serve as their nose. They pump water through their nasal passage, passing sensory cells called the Jacobson organ. Nikki, what are you doing now? I'm still trying to get to Indonesia. I got disoriented yesterday, but today I have a compass and transmitter. Luckily for green turtles, they don't need this equipment. Besides using wave direction, temperature, sunlight, they have their own internal compass. They have magnetic crystals in their brain that allow them to find their way back to their breeding ground. Green turtles are reptiles, so they don't have gills. They are extremely good breath hole divers and only need one explosive breath between five minute dives to replenish their lungs and tissue with the necessary oxygen. Depending on their activity level and stress, they can even stay down longer. We witnessed them grazing on the seabeds without resurfacing for up to 20 minutes. Aren't you a free diver? Yeah. Can you do that? Sure. Can you show me? Okay. How long are you going to hold your breath for? Like a turtle, huh? About 20 minutes? Okay, good luck. Can I go? Yeah. Alright. Ben, Ben. <gasps> what happened? Here's your coffee you ordered 10 minutes ago. I think you passed out. Oh God. Apparently I can't hold my breath as good as a green turtle. But that must be because they can lower their heartbeat down to one beat every five minutes and stay down on the water while asleep for up to two hours. Well, I'm not gonna try that again. Green turtles normally swim around 2 km an hour. They can do bursts of up to 30 km an hour when evading predators such as the tiger shark. Here in the Philippines though, they don't really need to worry too much about them. There is however a variety of other dangers they need to deal with on a daily basis. When they come up to breathe, they can get struck by boat propellers. This can cause dismembering, damage to the shell or even instant death. They can also get entangled in free floating ghost nets causing them to drown. Each year, about eight metric tons of plastic debris gets leaked into the ocean. Now, green turtles cannot distinguish between a plastic bag and a tasty jellyfish, therefore they end up suffocating with this in their stomach. Besides these human imposed threats, they also have natural parasites to deal with. Barnacles attached to the carpus, leeches attached to the skin and the flippers, causing damage to the soft tissue and blood loss, and they're also threatened by a very infectious disease called fibrofacomatosis, which is transmitted by leeches, and once they get infected, they can get a tumor-like growth really anywhere on their body. Even though green turtles are enlisted as endangered species now, historically, they have been murdered for their meat, poached and harvested for their eggs. In Hawaii, they've been used for their flippers in the handbag production. In Java, Indonesia, their eggs are considered a delicacy, but their meat can't be eaten according to Sharia law because it's unclean. And in Bali, Indonesia, they have been murdered for religious Hindu ceremonies. Multiple Filipino protected areas have significant green sea turtle nesting and feeding sites. The most notable is Turtle Island's Wildlife Sanctuary. 
So UNESCO tentative site which encompasses an entire municipality and is one of Southeast Asia's most important turtle nesting areas. Jack Cousteau once said, man carries the weight of gravity on his shoulders. He is bolted to earth. But once man sinks below the surface, he is free. The same counts for the green turtle. Even though they belong underwater, every once in a while they must come up to the surface. And that's when it's easiest to spot them on a boat or from the shore. It is not as common to see them swimming around in the deep but they prefer swimming close to the walls where they look for the occasional place to rest. Spotting them takes a bit of patience, but is more likely to cruise around in the shallows above 10 meters and look for seagrass beds where they graze. Once spotted, depending on how much they are used to people, it's nice to swim close and stay immobile about at least a meter or two away to observe their natural feeding behavior. So guys, thanks a lot for tuning into the Life Aquatic again. I hope you have a much better understanding now of the amazing life of the green turtle. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like, share with your friends and subscribe if you want to see more. If you want to become a dive instructor or even learn to dive, leave us a message in the comments section below and we'll be in touch. In the next episode, we will be putting the peacock mantis shrimp in the spotlight. This is one of underwater's most creatively violent crustaceans as well as one of the most colorful creatures. So, tune in next time to the Life Aquatic. Cheers! Cheers! Running deep.